Join Regina and guests as they create a mouth-watering sampler of fresh and nutritious salads. Apple fennel, Greek, and date mustard spinach salads are a few easy and flavorful ways to lighten up your diet. Regina also investigates the effects of tea on your immune system. Whenever we've done programs featuring salads, we've gotten an inundation of email with people asking for the recipes, which is leading me to believe that a lot of us are starting to add more salads to our menus or replacing our meals altogether with a salad, a concoction of some sort of fresh ingredients. So today's show is dedicated to salads and a very special guest, John Wood, who flew in from Los Angeles to be with us. And he is an expert on the subject of live foods and will be introducing us to a couple of ingredients that are not so common, such as hemp oil and liquid amino acids and he'll explain the reason for all of this a little bit later in the program but first we're going to start out with a wonderful Greek salad a little different than some Greek salads which no thank you well, I'm this bringing gives the, its, I'm, its this Greekness is, yes I'm we bringing the, in the Greekness of it and let's not get into the feta feta thing again okay. We've said that <laughs> feta feta well, we can do kalamata kalamata <laughs> yeah we can do that um, Traditionally, with Greek salads, you have these ingredients, which are these are the most these are staple ingredients mm -hmm. for a Greek that salad, Greek. which is yes, um, summer fresh vine ripened tomatoes, um, cucumber. You have to have some onion in there, olives, kalamata. We also use pine some nuts. Spanish green uh, olives, and then I love toasted mm -hmm. pine nuts in the salad. Oh, really, really um, adds a wonderful creaminess and flavor to it. And then the dressing, rather than putting on your traditional. Uh, oil and vinegar dressing, right. which is what's normally done, oil, just oil, olive oil, a little bit of vinegar, salt and pepper. We're going to make a creamy feta dressing. Ooh, okay. okay. So this one has, it gets its, um, basically it gets its bulk from cottage cheese here. And we're using a low-fat cottage cheese because this is not a thin dressing. This is thick. Which is why we're mixing it. Well, that's why we're, that's why we're blending it. The nice thing about it is it just coats the vegetables. You, you want to put it in and it's almost like a sour cream cucumber and the treatment. And this is the feta. And you want to put this up that's on it? there, Chris? Nope, that's oh, okay. not it yet. Right. And then we're putting some seasoned rice vinegar. Um, although you can use any kind of vinegar, I would not go with the balsamic because A, it turns the dressing a yucky beige <laughs> color, and it's a little too saturated yeah, with flavor for too that. too much flavor. And some salt? We're adding a little bit of salt. Now, I've used a French feta cheese, and you need to make a, diff a differentiation between the two because Greek is a little sharper in flavor. It has a little bit more salt in it, and so this is milder. So we're going to put a little bit more salt in it. feta is usually pretty salty. Pretty salty, but... but the French is less so? The okay. French is less salty, yes. And then finally, some olive oil. And not, not finally, one more ingredient. We're going to put a little bit of milk. In this case, I'm using a nut milk to thin it out a bit. Some we'll start almond. with a couple of... Mm -hmm. Almond milk, we're going to start with just a couple of tablespoons here. There we go. Let's start with that, and then you can pour some more in if it looks like it's not... Is that it now? Yeah, Fine. loosening up enough. Thank you. Okay. So here, so I can start it on low. Yeah, we've had no accidents. Not yet. No, we've, we've been series. real good with our, our mixing. <laughs> mm. Always got some. Mm -mm. Okay, here, why don't you taste this? You see, it's a little different because it has a little, little tiny bit of tang and sweetness from the seasoned Ooh. rice vinegar. Nice oh. flavor, huh? Very good. It goes really well with, um, as All I said, almost any through. vegetable. Mm -hmm. And so here we have, oh, two or three tomatoes. And if you can manage to find, uh, I, I think this is beautiful, if you can yeah, manage to find some multiple colored tomatoes, wonderful. So go with about that much. And then the cucumbers, you can get the little baby cucumbers that you use for pickling. Mm -hmm. They don't have as many seeds in them. Or you can use a standard cucumber and just cut out the seeds either way. And then we're using red onion because it has a little little less bite and a little more sweetness than so white onions and, and some varieties. Too. And a little color. And kalamata, kalamata olives. Okay, now I have washed my hands. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to mix these ingredients a little bit. And, yeah, you, the, you need to get Kalamata olives for this if you can possibly find them in your grocery store or gourmet shop. And then, yes, the and best those part. roasted pine roasted nuts. Roasted pine nuts. And I'm making this just a little bit okay. easier to, Thank to you. get out you and look so better, too. In fact, I'm going to show you just how considerate this man is in a little bit. He brought me the most lovely gift today. <laughs> Maybe we won't get to that. No, I think we need to get to that. <laughs> I'm glad you're not using your fingers now. Or you'd be 
coated with wonderful tasting. There we go. Dressing. Yum. Ooh, it, it's, it a, it's, a, pretty. it's a pretty salad. It pretty. And this is one that you don't want to let sit around too long. You want to serve it immediately. It'll start to separate. It'll start to separate. And also the tomatoes start mm -hmm. weeping. weeping. So, et voila. Nothing worse than an unhappy tomato. So You're eat right. it right away. <laughs> a lovely Greek salad. And next we have something I, that's uses an ingredient that is not often used in, in households, and that is fennel. We're having a fresh oh. apple and fennel salad with a uh, poppy seed vinaigrette dressing. It's really wonderful. And coming up now is one of Jeannie's favorite salads because she loves apples and grapes. But first, I'm going to have Chris share with all of us the gift he presented to me this morning. What every woman needs, a mounted bass, especially a vegetarian of 18 years. Uh -huh. You ready you for ready? why this is? His name is Big Mouth Billy Bass. <laughs> Drop me in the water. <laughs> I'm honored. He's going to go in the kitchen. Thank you, Chris. Yes, I do. <laughs> Okay, I guess we have to get down yes, to business Yes, back to here. our non-bass salad here. <laughs> okay, before we get the giggles any further, this is a really wonderfully crunchy and fresh salad, a little bit of sweet in it. So first of all, let's put the dressing together, and this dressing has a good amount of flavor. Let's set that aside for a moment. Okay. You, you can set it right okay. here. We'll get ready for it in just a sec. And the base of this is, you can use any nut oil. I'm using this beautiful it's toasted... Toasted almond oil. Is that Ooh, exquisite? Nice. It smells just it's like just, fresh almonds. Oh, God, it's just beautiful. So we're using an almond oil, although you can use any kind of a lighter oil, like a grapeseed oil would work really, as, really well. Um, I wouldn't go with olive oil in this. It's a little bit too heavy for this kind of a fruit salad. And again, a little seasoned rice vinegar, which is, you know, delicious in salads. Nice and sweet. Mm-hmm. And because this is a fruit base, we're adding about a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons of honey and about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of mustard. You can use any mustard. If you want to go with a really strong um, stone ground or Dijon style, that's fine. Here we have a spicy brown mustard and then a quarter of a teaspoon of poppy seeds. This adds an interesting look to it, but also a wonderful flavor. And a little crunch. Yeah, a little crunch. And then we'll add Some just salt. a good healthy pinch or two of salt, and why don't you go ahead and put this in the blender for just a sec, okay. just because I, I don't want it to separate. I want to get more of a creamy texture to it. We've already mixed it a little bit. I do love that bass. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of fun There's with no that bass. Not on only here. that, he's on a motion sensor, so as <laughs> your friends walk through the door, he will entertain them. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, big splat. Okay. That should be fine. Okay, so we have some fennel. Just one bulb of fennel, thinly sliced. Don't be afraid to try it. It really is a, it's a wonderful addition to salads. And then one apple that has been peeled, and then a cup of grapes, which have been halved. And also you can get rid of any seeds that way. And then we have some toasted walnuts in here. So you're getting a fair amount of a nutty flavor between the dressing and the toasted walnuts. And then here we have something that's optional. You can go with it like this, a nice vegan salad, or you can add a little bit of crumbled for some extra richness and a saturation of flavor, a little bit of English Stilton cheese to it. That's rich. It's very rich. Yep. Like I said, this is optional, and if you're vegan, you won't want to add this. But if you're not and you like a little cheese, it's a fabulous tasting cheese with apples and grapes and nuts and mustard, all, the, all of it. And go ahead and toss that together. And then as Chris is tossing this, you, nice should I put the um, yeah. dressing on? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We are going to go now to our healthful libation today. And it's going to go along with the next segment and our special guest coming up because we're talking to the tea lady about the use of herbs and teas for boosting the immune system. This is a wonderful subject, herbs in the immune system. Now, we all know what it's like after the immune system crashes and we head for either the pharmacy or the health food store or whatnot, refrigerator. <laughs> but we're going to talk a little bit about not only what you do for some particular ailments, specific ailments um, by way of herbal treatments, but also how to avoid getting in that situation with boosters for the immune system. So Linda, why don't you give us an idea of what's, what we have over here um, as an immune system enhancer? Yes, herbs to the rescue for prevention. Echinacea, 
We have some Echinacea purpurea, and Echinacea is a Native American plant. It grows all over northern part of the United States. We have an Echinacea flower in here. It's used in blends. It's used in herbal tea blends. It's also taken in tinctures, become very popular. A lot of studies done in Germany on it that it helps the immune system. Okay. And we have good. some reishi uh, mushroom here. This is an That's oriental. becoming popular. Very popular yeah. to help as a tonic for the immune system on a daily basis. And you take that you as a drink, tea? You can drink this as a tea. It's often uh, paired with ginger or astragalus, um, other blends that help to help you adapt. Okay, system. now let's say we have we've done everything wrong and we've trashed our immune systems and now we have a cold. Mm. And, and we'll start with colds first. Let's talk about a couple of the herbs that really help with um, colds. Lots of herbs help with colds. Of course you'd probably continue to use the echinacea. The echinacea right. um, peppermint is a wonderful cold herb. Just peppermint leaf. Um, you can combine it with ginger. That also helps because it warms you up when you have a cold. You're often cold. How about the Elder symptomatic? Flower? elements. Of the it. symptoms of when you're congested. Right. You can use ephedra, which is a wonderful decongestant herb. And you could be congested with a cold or with allergies. Ephedra will help. Okay. And now what do we And we have here a blend. This is um, a cold care blend. Mm -hmm. And it has the peppermint and the elderflower, which is very good for colds and flus. And licorice. It also combines some licorice. And this is licorice root, as you see here. It's a very important medicinal And herb. one other thing here, which um, I hadn't really taken note of before, but apparently when you're steeping your teas, first of all, with medicinals, it's a good idea to leave the tea bag in there a long time. Tell us the, the do nots. Yeah, <laughs> you wanna use freshly boiled water, you wanna leave the tea bag in there, and you definitely wanna put a cover on it. Covering the teacup, very important, especially with a medicinal tea, so that you keep all the vapors from the herbs that are brewing in there from escaping into the air. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You are a font of information. I appreciate it. Thank you. And now our very special guest, John Wood. Now, John was the head chef of Oxygen, the Oxygen Bar in Los Angeles, which is the only true live food and vegan restaurant. I remember reading about it in, uh, I think, a couple of magazines, food magazines. And your whole theory is that food should not be cooked to get its best benefit, right? Yeah, basically what we did at the restaurant is we uh, manufactured our own bread. We made everything from scratch mm -hmm. and sprouted grains. Uh, we used uh, cold pressed oils mm -hmm. and we didn't have an oven or stove. So we made pizzas, pastas, pies, cakes, uh, that, sushi. That begs the question, how do you bake a pie and bread with no oven? Yeah, we made the crust out of nuts and, and uh, dried fruits. There you go. We didn't okay. use any sugars. Okay. Uh, and then we would we use the blender a lot though. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That that's indispensable. Well, today we're going to be making a little different variation of Caesar salad. This has a hemp. Caesar dressing. And you've probably heard quite a bit about hemp because it's coming up more and more. There are hemp stores for hemp clothing and there are hemp products out on the market. But tell me what the value, nutritional value of hemp is and why you incorporate it into your recipes. Because so here, here we have hemp oil and then you use hemp nuts except that we couldn't find any. Yeah, they're hard <laughs> to find. <laughs> they're hard to find in this country. Hemp oil isn't that hard to find. Mm -hmm. You can get it at the health food store. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing about hemp oil is it has the highest amount of uh, essential fatty acids of any uh, oil. Is it is it omega-3, 6s, or yes. both? A yes. combination of the two? Higher than flaxseed. Higher than flaxseed. Yeah, it's very healthy. And what we're going to make today is a, a hemp Caesar salad dressing out of it. So and shall we begin? You want to explain the ingredients as we go? And you're sure. pouring them into the blender, right? Into the blender. This is the most indispensable part for doing uh, live foods, Yeah. Is, is the blender. That's basically all you need to, do, need to have. So we'll start with the hemp oil. OK. I can help you out here if you just okay. want to pass these things over. That's a half a cup. That is a really rich green color. Green olives. And I usually cut it with olive oil, one, because hemp oil is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and it also, uh, for a Caesar, I think it uh, lends itself more. To olive oil, yeah, yeah, you need to have that olive oil flavor. And traditional Caesars usually have some kind of an anchovy. Mm -hmm. But we're going to use a seaweed to get that fishiness in there. Okay. And we're using uh, dulse. And dulse is the most nutritious of all seaweeds. And yeah. they say it has a 65 different minerals. So it's really healthy. And does it have sodium in it as well, at all? Uh, sodium, but not the same kind of as, in, as in salt. So okay, it's very right. healthy. Right. It's the kind of so sodium your body needs. And then uh, garlic. 
Okay, uh, shallots. Yeah, I love shallots. Okay. And this is Bragg's amino acids. Oh, let's talk about amino acids. So we're using this for a, a salt substitute. So, uh, this is a, a raw, unpasteurized soy sauce, basically. So if, if people are on a um, sodium-restricted mm -hmm. diet, this might be a really good way to go. Uh, we use fresh squeezed lemon it. juice. Okay. Now, you can use vinegar instead if you prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, capers. Mm -hmm. A lot of the traditional flavorings that you would use in a Caesar. We like to use a lot of fresh herbs. So these are this is fresh oregano leaf. Yeah. You could use dry if you can't get the fresh, mm -hmm. though. And then this, you don't normally see nutritional yeast. This is like faux Parmesan. Yeah. It's vegan Parmesan, basically. It's very nutritious, and it tastes a lot like cheese, so it'll give the Caesar salad a cheesy. It does have a cheesy. very rich flavor. Mm -hmm. And then we have a little bit of organic sea salt. Sea salt. Now, this isn't like the sea salt you have at home. This has a lot more uh, vitamins and minerals in it. Right. And um, so we just put a pinch in there. You can add more if you want it really salty. Okay. And then just blend. I'm thinking that'll do it. Okay. And some nice crispy organic lettuce. And tell us what comes next now. When you're, when you're making live food, we don't use anything cooked. Mm -hmm. And so some people might want to put croutons on a salad. You can make uh, raw bread, but we're not making it today. Instead, we're going to use just chopped macadamia nuts. Yeah. And that'll give you that texture, mm -hmm. something to chew on mm -hmm. in your salad. So we'll sprinkle some of those on. Okay. And these are uh, a variety of different tomatoes. It's not that these are underripe. This is a variety that actually ripens green. So we'll just sprinkle these on. And then we'll add some dressing. Okay, tell me when. Let's see. That looks like. Does that look like when? Yeah, that looks like when. <laughs> okay. I want to bring the salad bowl and the salad servers over, and we'll begin tossing this. I'll let you do the honors of tossing. How's that? All right. Okay. Here we go. And in just a moment, we're going to come back. And what is your second specialty of the day? We're going to make a date mustard. Uh, dressing over Yum. for spinach salad. Mm, sounds good. Okay. Well, we'll taste this in just a bit. We have a really interesting salad coming up now. I'm excited to taste this one. I uh, love dates, and you have wonderful ingredients in here. We have figs and bell pepper, some apples, and then a little bit of mustard seed. This is a really very flavorful um, recipe that you're making. And as we go along here and start making the dressing, which is actually going to incorporate the dates in it, in the blender, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll ask a couple questions along the way. So why don't you go ahead and begin composing our dressing and explaining to us what's going on? Since this is live food, we're using something that's alive, and these are live mustard seeds. So we're just going to take the mustard seeds and put them in there, and that's going to be the first thing we blend. And then we're going to add olive oil, Okay. the cold-pressed olive oil. I just noticed this is a lot of olive oil. We're making a big recipe. We are? Yeah. Okay. We're not using the whole thing on this end. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, but you can good. keep it. You can keep it in the fridge. Right. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this is enough to go around for a few days. Yeah. Is it still? That's a question I want to ask you. After you, you're talking about live foods. What mm. happens if we put this dressing together and then bottle it for a few days in the refrigerator? Is it still has? Does it still have its integrity? It loses it over time. Yeah. So the sooner you eat it, the better. Mm -hmm. It's different for things like uh, figs or, or dates. And dates. Yeah. They uh, keep it for a long time right. because they're, the, the sugars okay. preserve them. Okay. So we blend this until those little mustard seeds are all blended up. Okay. I can do that. And then we're going to be adding this. And you can talk about that. In fact, do you want this over a high or low blend? I think it's going to need to go high. That looks good. You can't hardly hear the seeds in there anymore. Right. So next we're going to add raw apple cider vinegar. So this is different from regular apple cider vinegar. This is raw unpasteurized, so the enzymes are still present. So where do you find this? Is this something that is, this something that is normally um, found in the refrigerated section? or? No, you don't have to refrigerate it, and it's usually found at a health food store. Okay. It's the same people that make the uh, amino acids. Okay. So we'll add that. All right. And then instead of sugar or honey, mm, we're using dates. And uh, these we've look taken like these big dates. Medjool dates. These are big, beautiful medjools. Oh, yeah. And you see, we had to pit these first. So <laughs> you got to take the pit out. That's really important. Thank you. <laughs> um, Should I put them all in here? Put them all in there. The okay. thing about dates is that it's a food. Unlike sugar, you can't really live on it. With dates, you can live on these. There's a lot, a lot of vitamins. Of minerals. Yeah, so you're making a very nutritious dressing right here. Mm, this looks so good. I'm going to keep one little tiny piece out of it. <laughs> <laughs> going to add a little garlic. 
Okay. Three. Three. Garlic. And again, some Celtic sea salt, which is the unrefined sea salt, and just however much you like. This is a pretty large batch of dressing. How about a couple pinches? Is that okay with you? That would be great. Okay. And then you're going to blend this until it's smooth. It's not going to be easy. Okay. In other words, it's going to take a while. It might take a while. So we should whistle while we work. No, we can bring our bass on to sing to us. <laughs> <laughs> what we've done here, in the last recipe we used the amino acids. Mm -hmm. Here we marinated these onion, these red onions ringlets in the amino acids. Oh, okay. And that makes them not so strong and not so difficult to deal with. Right. So, so this is, if you have problems digesting onions, is this going to help in the process? Yeah, and, they, and it won't be so overpowering okay. like they are in salads sometimes. Okay. I like to use red onions because they're milder. Mm-hmm. Okay. And can we put the figs in now? Figs. We chopped up some figs. These look like they're Black Mission figs. But you can use any figs. Mm -hmm. Right, fresh or dry? Fresh or dry. Okay. And uh, then apples, there you go. One apple. One apple. With the skins. With the skin for color. Alrighty. And? Some chopped walnuts. So we're using walnuts like croutons again here. And some red pepper for color. Okay, okay now you want me to do the here? Yeah. This is moving slowly. <laughs> it's a thick dressing. Now you can also warm this up on the stove, if you if you like a nice warm dressing, mm -hmm. and just keep an eye on it by putting your finger in there. You don't want to boil it; you just want to keep it warm. Okay. And when it's warm to your finger, that's when you take it off the stove. Okay, and then it, I assume it's a little bit. There you go, a little okay. bit thinner, I would assume. Yeah, it'll thin it. it out. Okay. Mmm. -hmm. I love dates. This is going to be splendid. Now, while you're tossing this, we're going to go to David Berkeley. He's our wine expert, and he pairs all of our dishes with the wine of choice. We'll all see right. what it is today. Beautiful. Regina, I just returned from the Greek Isles. One of my top priorities every day was to make sure that at lunchtime, I was on a patio of Daverna with one of those delicious Greek salads, a glass of wine, and a view of the beautiful blue Aegean Sea. Now, Greek salads are very simple, and the wine should be as well, crisp and clean and light, not oaky. So certainly Sauvignon Blanc would work, and maybe a non-oaky Chardonnay. But to my surprise, I've discovered that a number of Italian wines match up very well, something like Pinot, Grigio, or even a Suave. They're wonderful with Greek salad, so give them a try. For the apple fennel salad, I can't imagine a wine being better than white Riesling. Some people still label it as Johannesburg Riesling, but they are the same. Interesting, the distinctive characteristics of white Rieslings are apples in the nose and almost an appleish taste. Now, one of the best examples of white Rieslings are the German wines. I would suggest the viewers look for tall green bottles. They're the most delicate, and certainly would be beautiful, this apple fennel salad. Also, look on the label for the word cabinet, spelled with a K. That tells you it's the drier style, not the dessert wine. John, sometimes things don't work out the way they're supposed to around here, such as we try to save some of the food so we have a lovely beauty shot mm -hmm. that we can use on the show, and some of it's already been eaten, so we have a little little bald spot here in our <laughs> display. <laughs> in any event, uh, we tasted, among the foods we were tasting was um, you were your salads, and they really are wonderful. The first one sounds a little strange when you're looking at these exotic ingredients, but really has a fantastic flavor, and I was particularly partial to the date dressing. So thank you for your time and for sharing your information about live foods. Thank you. Until next time, Santé. To find out more about Regina's Vegetarian Table, visit our PBS website at pbs.org.